This is Ann Stallman, and you're listening to The Poets Lighthouse. And we have a few poems we're going to read today. And it has to do with pain, love, and God. And so let's get started. First poem of the day is on the night, on the evening, wherever the sun rises or rests. Currently it's uh, 12.30 right now in the morning, so I'm a late out. Prague by Stephen Dobbins. The day I died, my apologies. The day I learned my wife was dying, I told myself, if anyone said, well, she had a good life, I'd punch him in the nose. How much life represents a good life? Maybe a hundred years, which would give us nearly 40 more to visit Oslo and take the train to Vladivostok. Learn German to read Thomas Mann in the original. Even more baseball games, more days at the beach, and the baking of more walnut cakes for family birthdays. How much time is enough time? How much is needed for all these unspent kisses? Those slow walks along cobbled streets. And that was Prague by Stephen Dobbins. And if I'm mispronouncing some of these words, which I very well will be, my apologies. So that was a really, it was a nice poem. I like that. It's a good first choice. Next up, we have multiple men guest starring me and you. By Gary Jackson. Every night, I sleep on alternate sides of the bed, as if to duplicate sleeping with you. If I'm fast enough, I'm the warmth of my own body beside me. Reach out and touch myself. Reach the blue of my bones. Breathe in my own air. You left me. I'm here. I left you to be with me. Someone asks if your body was worth trading for mine. My sin was always pride. Did you want a man who sleeps with himself to keep the bed warm? I need you like the earth needed the flood after death. One of the lines that really stuck out to me, or stuck out to me, um, something that caught my attention, it's kind of what I call like a hook, you know, what catches fishes, because I spend time, um, you know, digging through poems, like, through the hundreds, and um, so I can't really, you know, fully dive into a lot of the poems. I might very well be skipping a ton of good ones but you know one day I'll find it but what caught my attention with this one was how the very first one first line I sleep on alternate sides of the bed as if to duplicate sleeping with you it's it you know this person Gary Jackson felt this, thought this, wrote this down, and how many of us are actually doing so without thinking of it? You know, it's strangers writing for strangers, pretty much. Unfamiliar faces with all too much familiar feelings. And yeah, that was Multiple Men, guest starring Me and You, by Gary Jackson. Next we have 
I can't even pronounce her last name. <laughs> but it's by Gabrielle Calvacorisi. So hopefully, you know, I don't ruin it too much, but the poem is Miss You Would Like to Take a Walk with You. Do not care if you just arrive in your skeleton. Would love to take a walk with you. Miss you. Would love to make you shrimp saganaki. Like you used to make me when you were alive. Love to feed you. Sit over steaming bowls of pilaf. Little roasted tomatoes covered in pepper and nutmeg. Miss you. Would love to walk to the post office with you. Bring the ghost dog. We'll walk past the waterfall and you can tell me about the after. Wish you. Wish you would come back for a while. I didn't even need to bring your skin sack. I'll know you. I know you will know me even though. I'm bigger now. Grayer. I'll show you my garden. I'd like to hop in the leaf pile you raked, but if you wanted me to jump in, I'll take it for you. Miss you standing, looking out at the river with your rake in your hand. Miss you and your puffy blue jacket. They're it now. I can bring you a new one if you'll only come by. No, I told you it was okay to go. No, I told you it was okay to leave me. Why'd you believe me? You always believed me. Wish you would come back so we could talk about truth. I miss you. Wish you would walk through my door. Stare out from the mirror. Come through the pipes. And that was Miss You. Would like to take a walk with you. By Gabriel Cavalcoresi. And following the pain of losing someone, it's a poem titled Losses by Wesley McNair. It must be difficult for God listening to our voices come up through his floor of cloud to tell him what's been taken away. Lord, I've lost my dog, my period, my hair, all of my money. What can he say? Given we're so incomplete, we can't stop being surprised by our condition. While he is completeness itself? Or is it God more like us, made in his image, shaking his head because he can't be expected to keep track of which voice goes with what name and address? He being just one God. Either way, we, we seem to be left here to discover our losses. Everything from car keys to larger items we can't search our pockets for. Destined to face them on our own. Even though the dentist gives us music to listen to and the assistant looks down with a lovely smile, it's still our tooth he yanks out, leaving a soft spot we ponder with our tongue for days. Left to ourselves, we always go over and over what's missing. Tooth, dog, money, self-control, and even losses. As troubling as the absence, the widower can't stop reaching for on the other side of his bed a year later. Then one odd afternoon, watching something as common as the way the light from the window lingers over a vase on the table, or how the leaves on his backyard tree change colors all at once in a quick wind, he begins to feel a lightness, as if all his loss has led to finding justice. Only God knows where the feeling came from, or maybe God's not some knower off on a cloud. But there in the eye, which tears up now at the strangest moments, over the smallest things. 
Gnosis by Wesley McNair. And looking back at it right now, one of the hooks that caught me too is, it must be difficult for God, one of the first lines. And also it was, I think I was scrolling a little bit down. Only God knows where the feeling came from. I am a huge fanatic of poetry, especially those revolving um, religion. The tug and pull, kind of like, you know, like a war. Um, it's... It always takes me aback because, you know, who's brave enough to, to go after a god? Do they not know the consequences? There's preachers out in the streets yelling the words that he spoke. Or perhaps reciting the words others misheard. But I'm, that's what makes me a huge fan of, you know, poems about God or religion. It's, it's the sheer audacity to write it, I guess. You know? It could be praising. It could be a big fuck you. But, I don't know, I just think it's amazing how... Not amazing, but... What? Where, do, where does a path lead a person? And how treacherous does it have to be in order for them to abandon faith, so to speak? I might not be making sense. Who knows? It is fairly late in the morning. Or, yeah, I think that's how you say that. So, with that being said, we are moving on to a poem about pain by David Budbill. I can feel myself slipping away, fading away, withdrawing from this life just as my father did. When the pain you're in is so great you can't think about or pay attention to anything but your own pain, the rest of the world and all other life don't matter. I think of all my friends with dementia, cancer, arthritis, and how much more pain they are in than, than I am. But it does no good. The pain is not mine. And therefore, no matter how magnanimous I might want to be, the pain is not as important to me as my own. I forgot when, uh, and I'm sorry, it is a poem about pain by David Budbill. But essentially what I was going to go say is, I remember reading that at a time in, or a point in my life where... I was extremely angry. Um, and I, you know, same reasons why people go and search for religion. I just needed somebody. I just needed my finger to aim at somebody. And that's why I took it right up to the heavens, right up to the clouds. Um, and I remember the first poetry competition I ever submitted was pretty much uh, 30 pages of hey, listen to what I got to say and you can do whatever the hell you want with my papers. Um, I, I didn't enter. I wasn't expecting to win. I didn't expect anything of it. I didn't even know when I was going to hear back. Um, still will, even once I'm back in August. A little, little, uh, a little hurtful still. <laughs> Getting rejected. Um, and so yeah um, haven't entered it back I've always wanted to enter there's been a few poem poetry contests but um, I don't know I don't know what's keeping me back one day I won't be held back anymore and with that being said let's move on to the next poem and it is Untitled by James Baldwin Lord, when you send for the rain, think about it, please, a little. 
Do not get carried away by the sound of falling water, the marvelous light on the falling water. I am beneath that water and falls with great force and, and the light blinds me to the light. Untitled by James Baldwin. And that's how it feels sometimes too. Some days it feels like, you know, God's pissing on you and other days it feels like you're in love with the smell of wet concrete and you're dancing in the rain. And then there's James Baldwin. Fantastic person. I highly recommend watching interviews of him. Incredibly intelligent man. And up next, we have Psalm for My Faith by Jack Aguiros. Aguiros. Sorry about that. Lord, it's not true that my faith is cooling. It's just that people are saying that candle smoke has caused cancer in church mice. And I also worry that candle light is too weak to reach your cloud. Do I need a hydrogen candle? Are the angels into lasers? Lord, as I think about it, Lately, I haven't had much to thank you for. Are you on vacation? Psalm for my faith by Jack Aguiros. Sometimes it feels like that, you know? You're praying, you're speaking, you're trying to start a conversation and talking to a wall. Or maybe that's how God is. Or maybe, you know, He's just human like the rest of us. And so it'll take some time until He makes His way towards us. And with that being said, wanting a humane God as possible, a God in my image. We are going to read Prayer Oración by Francisco X. Alarcón. I want a God as my accomplice who spends nights in houses of ill repute and gets up late on Sundays. A God who whistles through the streets and trembles before the lips of his lover. A God who waits in line at the entrance of movie houses and likes to drink cafe au lait. A God who spits blood from tuberculosis and doesn't even have enough for bus fare. A God knocked unconscious by the billy club of a policeman at a demonstration. A God who pisses out of fear before the flaring electrodes of torture. A God who hurts to the last bone and bites the air in pain. A jobless God, a striking God, a hungry God, a fugitive God, an exiled God, an enraged God. A God who longs from jail for a change in the order of things. I want a more God-like God. As prayer oración by Francisco X. Alarcón. I did have four more poems on the side of me. Um, actually five. I'm sorry. Don't mean to be telling lies. Um, but there's one poem I'm gonna read, and it's gonna be a poem about one that I wrote about religion. And it kind of comes full circle. And it's titled, Abandoned Dog, by Ann Stoneman. I'm an abandoned dog, looking for his owner. Where is my leash? I feel as though I cannot breathe without one. My color of faith, I bark for you, my lord. 
that was abandoned dog by Ann Stoneman. All right, I think that's as good a spot as any to leave it right there. So, and with that being said, I just want to thank everyone who is listening. And with that, I think now's the time. Now's the time as good as any, right? This has been Ant Stoneman, and this is the Poets Lighthouse. Till next time.